Howdy. Welcome back to the West of Lothan. We're back with our hero, Limp McCain. And I think it'd be a good time to go search some caves, starting with the nearest one, Humming Cave. I don't have any safe cracking, so I can't do anything there. Humming Cave. Oh, this is what the nun was talking about. Oh! That was easy. Huh. These rocks are weirdly organized. Oh, I love listening to this. Okay. Um, might be able to push this over. A snake isn't gonna let you pass without a struggle. Fight! That was easy. Snake venom bladder and electric snake skin. Wow, what is that thing? What? This looks dangerous. This monolith is dark. Looks like there's a huge cave in somewhere. A weird device. Strange stone. This is probably why they call it Humming Cave. There's some weird stuff happening here in the west of Lothan. Okay, let me... Is there a snake back there? Okay, let me try. No. Oh, okay, yeah, that's literally what I thought it was. Just, to, just a way to get out of fighting. No, I need the AXP. Okay, that takes care of Humming Cave. Actually, um, let's go turn in that favor for the nurse. Uh, the strange stone around you starts going crazy, beeping and booping, rolling around of its own accord, frankly dragged you in the direction. Professor's house. I'm, I'll go there later. Uh, here you go. Welcome back. Were you able to find the humming cave in the purple grass? Yeah, here you go. Thank you very much. Blessings upon you. Can I buy medical supplies? Okay, yeah. Uh -oh. Store for healing stuff. Alright, next mine... Gold Ridge Mine. Before you can react to the sudden howling, a ghost train surges over the hill, wards past you, just missed three skeleton train robbers. Drive just past you, drive this way. Uh, let's try it. I don't like the hot poker. I got some stuff I need to sell as well. Let's just check out these mines for now and see what we can do. Still can't do anything there. Old Ridge Mine. Huh. There's a roll of lockers here. The first one labeled Ellsbury WM. The label on the second one is covered in some kind of white goo. The third one's labeled Loose Ben. Ben Loose, W.M. Ellsbury. And the first one? Ellsbury. Bottle, okay. And the second locker. A skeleton covering the same white goo found on the outside of the Ah, you get it. This guy must have died after his co-worker played a prank on him. They stuffed him in the locker and they filled it with shaving cream. I can't believe the danger stuffed him. Filled it with shaving cream. I died from that. Y'all just come yeah, I'm gonna have to fight this guy. Hey! Cargo be civil. There we go. And then 
finally, third locker. It's a combination of there. You don't know the combo. Ah. Hmm. Some more meat. Mind that. Yeah. This is why it's good. You get the pickaxe. These stones have little triangles painted on them. They're in a triangle. Very, it's very triangle. That's got to be important for something. This spiral. This spiral makes you more comfortable. Oh man. Freaking shadow scared me. Yeah. Ghost minecart here. I can't do anything about it. That takes it for the, this mine for now. Last one, Snake Pit Mine. Okay. Head take a drink. Mine it. You look at the mining equipment, you have no idea what it does. Hey, Susie? Hey, Susie, you don't know how any of this stuff works? Play it to Susie. Hey Susie, what? I just wanted to uh, meet presser. <laughs> ah, I bet he would know what these are. Oh, well. different playthrough maybe. If I get enough support. Ooh, you can see a snake coiled up in the little. Pull it out and punch it. That's a big old snake. That's a dead old snake. Okay. These are like the different snakes I can get. With the different skins I can put on the hats. Oh, just not good. Yeah, I'm fine. Yep. Yeah. Got another pickaxe. Guess that's probably why they call it Snake Pick Mine. Because I'm full of snakes. That's literally it. Wow. Okay, I thought I saw something. Well... I guess that kind of does it for this episode. Of the West of Loaning. Kind of a short one, I guess. Uh, let's wander around a little... Let's wander around a little bit. Maybe we'll find another mine. Yeah, Shagadog Cave. I guess, I guess that'll work. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, there's a plaque bolted to the cave. Uh, 
record of the events of the Expedition 2 and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887 by Jim Blackburn. Okay. Having acquired through various and sundry means a story which is interesting and story, but better stay for another time, a map purporting to lead to the large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous Highlandmen and train robbers. Black Cole Jr. years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackwright, along with three companions, compatriots, these being Nathan, Nathaniel Wyme, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watt, set out to find Shag Dog Cave, the aforementioned treasure. Our equipment and provisions consist of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mining pick, a large coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assess assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, many own collections of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and one shaggy dog, and a butt four. Black here in the cave. After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrive at a small town in Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of the Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horse, the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon. Each ordered beer, except Sai, who was satisfied with the water. Barmen provided our drinks as requested and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar asking us if we cared to witness something real interesting. Considering that we still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally but gave us the rough directions, which correlated nicely with the notes of our map. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our Dismay that some unknown civilian had tapped with our wagon. Wagon. Unfortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt four and the entire basket of eggs, apart from one that Doug had concealed within our pocket for safekeeping. We we also discovered that the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing the inside after drawing the lots to share. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as replacement butt four, we headed out to the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, though we took a small solace in the fact that we would have been much far more intolerable if we had made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming days from the heat and susceptible Desert Mirage, we exchange stories of you, which I will not be retelling for the reasons here of the length. However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek in the desert. The first one is two or three hours out of dirt water when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon the metallic object partially buried in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp. Which fortuitously continued, con which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stash in the wagon with our other tools. Excuse me. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribes tribesman who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired as to our destination, and we replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. As the goblin confirmed that we were heading the correct course and mentioned that he had a short time earlier witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse. In the same direction, we all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed and continue on our way. Sometime later, we encountered a large adobe hut occupied by two identical seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter in 
he, which we gratefully accepted and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as particular given that there were two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them at that point. One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shagadog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what the brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits were refreshed our water supply in exchange for a buff fort, and we continue our way excited to finally meet our goal. After two or more hours, we finally arrive at Shaggy Dog Cave, carefully keeping our excitement in check. Lest we become cautious, we unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon to a brief respite and the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed and shared the egg he had saved from our basket that had resulted in their water. Once we were, we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. Discovering that we had neglected to pack a torch, lanterns, or any other light source with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered an antique old lamp during our travel. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick, and then we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided an adequate amount of light. As we headed into the cave, we Further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, there were no side passages which might cause us to become lost despite this. I resolved to hang a number of plaques to make our progress through the cave and engrave them with the tale of our journey, such that otherwise who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and edified by our story. Soon we came to the end of the tunnel, while Nate, Sai, and Doug took turns with the excavation, I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. This was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sai's shovel struck a wooden surface, the hollow noise that we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. The chest was locked with an ancient rusting iron padlock which broke easily with a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly and the flickering lights of the anti oil lamp showed brilliantly upon the jewels of every color shining ingredients and precious metals that had been promised by the legend of Black Colt Jr. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest of our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading and may your own endeavors be equally successful. Signed, Jim Plackwright. Go fuck yourself, Jim. It's a whole, com a completely empty one. Honestly, this is funny, but go fuck yourself, Jim. My throat is gonna be destroyed. Oh, uh, what about the large shaggy dog riding a horse? <clears throat> This game is great. I genuinely love this. And I hope you all did too. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's wander around a bit more. Uh, flying, okay. Boom. Ah, Susie became stronger. Let's try wandering again. At the side of a trail, you see a small hell cow. A hell cat. Really? It snorts at a patch of brush, lying on fire, and it's starting. It started screezing. Ugh, kill it! Jeez, calm down, Susie. It's only a little one. Kill it before it gets bigger. Punch it in the now to establish superiority. No, fight it. I want EXP. Boom. Pow. Yeah. 
Uh, let's do a three. Let's wander three more times, and I'll call it a video. Uh, a few hundred yards up the trail, you see a solitary skeleton trudging towards the northwest. Okay, let's put this guy out of his misery. Skeletons. Two more times. In the middle of the desert, you find an abandoned minecart. It's sitting in the section of minecart tracks about 12 feet long, which start nowhere in particular and end less somewhere in particular. Cool. It's mostly full of old rocks, not even interesting looking. However, there was unrefined meat nuggets. Which I can sell. You find a pair of binoculars hanging on a passing cactus, I mean, cactus, you're passing, not a cactus that's passing you. It's only looking like it's passing you because of your frame of reference. Hey! Okay, last time we're wandering, and then I'll probably head back to dirt water. Uh, they send over to the book by its cover one, and you see someone wearing dark cultist robes. It seems pretty safe to bet that there's some sort of cultist. Oh, well, cool is the fact that here she's trying to teach the skeleton how to tap dance. At least that's what it looks like. Intermediate next, Max. Great. Okay, I'm gonna head back to dirt water. Oh, whoa. Off the one side of the trail, you see a covered wagon and a small family of setters who look upset. You folks okay? We're on our way to dirt water, but our wagon went and broke down on us. That's rough. You're liable to get attacked by bandits out here, or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts, or other things that basically live exclusively on that live exclusively on stranded travelers. Isn't there something you can do to help us? Um, ask Susie to fix the wagon. Susie, you know you know about wagon stuff. Think you can fix it? Reckon. Susie crawls onto the wagon, pulls around for a moment, then reappears with a chunk of dead rat over, over her shoulders. Rat's in your carburetor. She's fine now. Oh, thank you. See, it's a good thing I got Susie around. I'm gonna go up in my room. And, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there. So, Come back next time to see where our intrepid hero goes to next in the West of Lothan.